In this video, we're gonna cover the installation and setup of Launch Pass for Xbox Series X and S. All right, everybody, a new front end has been launched for the Xbox Series X and S called Launch Pass, and this is a fork of RetroPass, but includes way more customization options, which should be pleasing to many of you out there. This release comes to us from Misunderstood Wookie, Dan Price, Mr. Julius, and it can be kind of complicated to get set up for anyone who hasn't done so already, which is kind of the point of this video. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, as we begin the launch pass setup, there are a couple of things you're going to need. The first of which is an Xbox Series X or S set up into dev mode. So if you don't have dev mode already installed on your Xbox, you can follow my RetroArch setup guide for getting dev mode up and running. You will also need a properly formatted USB drive. So I have guides on how to set that up on PC as well as Mac. Well, I mean, Mac is essentially running a VM to run PC, but either way, guides exist to get you a properly set up USB drive. It needs to be an NTFS format with proper security permissions. So again, these two videos will help you get set up. Next, you are going to need to have emulators installed. So again, I have a RetroArch setup guide with core setup guides for most systems that most people should be interested in. I don't have everything because I don't own everything, sadly. But there's also guides for Flycast, XBSX2 for PS2, Dolphin, and Xenia Canary. So this playlist will have everything you need to get set up for Launch Pass. Next, we are going to download Launch Pass to install into our dev mode Xbox. So link to the GitHub will be in the description below, but just grab the latest release. So scroll down here and you will see the app X download here. So grab that. And then also grab the dependency zip. There we go. And after you get both of those downloaded, just go ahead and get your dependency zip file extracted. So that way we can install them with our device portal here in just a second. Now get your Xbox booted up into dev mode and make note of your remote access IP address so we can get into our Xbox device portal. Once you have loaded into your Xbox device portal, just click on the add button under my games and apps. Now you can decide whether you're gonna choose a file or just drag it in. I'm just gonna choose choose. We're gonna grab launchpass.appx. Once it's selected, click on next and we're gonna add our dependency files. So you can drag them in one at a time or just click on the select button and load them up. So we wanna grab the ones that are in the x64 folder. Now just start adding in your dependencies. So I'm just gonna start from the top and add in each one. And once you have all of them selected, just go ahead and click on start to begin the install process. Now, if you get any errors adding in the dependency files, always remember to refresh your web browser and it should help you right out. So now back over on your Xbox, you'll see that you now have Launch Pass installed. Now, unlike emulators, we do not have to change Launch Pass to a game. If we change it to a game, it'll actually break some of its functionality. Launch Pass must be set as an app, which is what it is set to by default unless you've changed some things in your Xbox device portal. But from here, go ahead and get your Xbox's USB drive that you use for emulation unplugged from the Xbox and hooked up to your PC. Now the next step for getting Launch Pass up and running is to download LaunchBox for Windows. So link will be in the description below. So you will need to enter your email address for this process as it sends you the download link directly to your email. It's kind of obnoxious, but is what it is. And once you enter your email and you click the download button, it'll tell you, thank you, please check your email for the download link. So after that, go ahead and check your email, click on your download link to get LaunchBox downloaded. Now with the launch box set up downloaded, we are going to run it as normal. Accept the license agreement. And now when you get to the destination location, we are going to change this to our Xbox USB drive. So for me, that would be my G drive. So look for your Xbox USB drive. I don't know how your setups are. So pay attention to where you're installing it. It just needs to go onto your Xbox USB drive. Just select it, click OK, and then click Next. And then you can tell it you don't want it to create start menu folders so it doesn't mess up your PC or anything. And then just install it.
And once the install is finished, it will boot into LaunchBox. And from here, we can go ahead and get things configured. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close out of the add games thing first. We're gonna begin with emulator setup. So to configure our emulators, first thing we're going to do is click on the three little boxes here. Click on tools, manage, emulators. Now from here, click on add. And for emulator name, just type in RetroArch. And for the application path, just type in RetroArch again. And then check the box, attempt to hide console window on startup. Once you have this entered, go ahead and click on the associated platforms button and choose all of the cores that you are going to be using with RetroArch. So for example, 3DO, Atari, I'm not gonna be using RetroArch for GameCube, so I'm gonna uncheck that. Or Wii. Not gonna be using it for PS2, which is not in here by default, which is good. So if you're not gonna be using it for PSP, make sure you uncheck that as well. And once you have your core selection set, just go ahead and click on OK. And now we're gonna add in our other emulators. So next up, let's do Dolphin. So just type in Dolphin. And then under Application Path, type in Dolphin again. And then go ahead and remove the default command line parameters. And once you have that set, go to Associated Platforms and make sure that GameCube and Wii are both selected. And once that's set, click on OK. Next up, let's add in XBSX2 for PS2 emulation. So emulator name, we'll just type in XBSX2. And then for application path, XBSX2 once again. Now under associated platforms, we are going to add in Sony PlayStation 2. And make sure default emulator is checked. And once these are set, click on okay. Now we'll add in Xenia Canary. And under application path, Xenia-Canary. There we go. Now under associated platforms, we're gonna go in here and type in Microsoft Xbox 360. And make sure default emulator is checked. And once that's set, click OK again. Now if you have standalone PPSSPP installed, you can click on add. Emulator name, type in PPSSPP. And then for application path, type in ppsspp.exe. And then under associated platforms, you make sure Sony PSP is selected as your default emulator. I'm not using standalone PPSSPP, so I'm just gonna leave that unchecked for the time being, but that is the setup process. And finally, for anybody that is using Retrix Gold, go ahead and click on add once again. Under emulator name, type in Retrix Gold. And then under application path, type retrix.uwp.exe. And once that's set, click on associated platforms. And you're going to go ahead and choose all the platforms you want to use with retrix. So if you're going to be using this instead of RetroArch, just go ahead and select the systems that you want to use. So for example, if you wanted 3DO, Atari 2600, or Jaguar, or anything. It doesn't really matter. Just select the ones that you plan to use with Retrix. So just like that. And then make sure you have them checked as the default emulator. Otherwise, it will default to RetroArch instead. Now to add in the cores that it's going to use, we are going to click within the path here under default command line parameters. Put in quotations, type in cores, slash, now you need to put in the name of the libretro core that you're going to be using. So if you have a PC version of RetroArch installed, you can use that. Otherwise, you can load up the latest core list from the libretro nightly builds and all that. It has all the cores listed here. So unfortunately, you are going to need to know what each one is. 
So, for example, 3DO is listed under Opera. So let's go Opera LibRetro.dll right there. Cool. So just going to bring this to the side here so we can see that. Opera underscore LibRetro.dll. And then we're going to end it with another quote. And again, make sure you have default emulators selected if you plan on using these within Retrix. And then you just go through and do the same thing with all the other cores. So Atari 2600, that one is listed under Stella. So let's find Stella real quick. So Stella underscore libretro dot DLL. So same thing, cores slash Stella underscore libretro dot DLL. End with a quote. Now, JAG is virtual JAG, so let's see here. Virtual JAG, there we go. Cores slash virtual Jaguar underscore lib retro dot DLL quote. And I actually don't think N64 works with three tricks at the current moment, but I'm still gonna use it as an example because why not? This one's Moopin64 Plus next. So there we go, Moopin64 Plus underscore next underscore libretro. And make sure you don't suck at spelling like I do. There we go. So that is how you would get all of your Retrix cores added in and set up. But once you have everything good to go, just click on OK and it is now set and ready to go as well. And once you have all of your emulators set up, just go ahead and click on the close button here. And now we'll begin adding in our games. So you can just click on tools, import, ROM files, next. And then we can add in our folders for our games. So just navigate to your USB drive where you have your games stored and begin going platform by platform to add in your games. So I'm just gonna start with my 3DO games here. Next, platform for this would be 3DO 3DO Interactive Multiplayer. Next, you're gonna choose your default emulator out of your selected ones here. So I run those through RetroArch. Can uncheck automatically download RetroArch core. We don't need to download the cores because we already got them. Click on Next. And we don't need to worry about the BIOS file because it should already be in your system folder if you configured the emulators previously. So just click on Next. And then click on Yes to skip for now. And be sure to select use the files in their current location. Next, we're gonna search for the game information and the local meta database. So click next. And you will be able to download a bunch of different things for your games here. So we don't need to download everything. What we are interested in is the box 3D, the box front, the cart front, the clear logo, the disc, fan art background, screenshot game title, screenshot gameplay, screenshot game select, and those are the options that LaunchPass is looking for when it comes to media types. So get those selected, and then you can click on next. And if you have an Emmy Movies login, you can search for data through that as well. And then you can uncheck, look for PDF files to use for the game manual and combine ROMs. Now click on next to begin the import. And finish once you see all of your games listed. And from here, LaunchBox will add the games in and download all of the media types that were selected. So here are all of my 3DO games now added into LaunchBox and ready to go. And each one has a box art that's been downloaded but you are able to go in and customize these if things don't look quite how you would like. For example, my Gex one up here isn't quite matching the rest of them in long box box art form, is it? So to change this, you could go up to edit or right click edit, edit media type. And then from here, there is the media tab on the left. So just click on images and you can see that I do have a long box box art available, but it is defaulting to these other ones. So I'm actually just going to delete these ones to make it so the long box one is the one that will pop up. 
and there we go. Now it lines up with the rest of my 3DO titles. And once you have your current system finished to your liking, you can begin adding in even more games. So same thing, tools, import, ROM files, next. Choose the folder of the system you want to import. So go to your Xbox USB drive, find your games folder. And this time I'm going to be doing um, arcade games. So just tell it to select the folder. And then from here, click on next. Choose your default, um, your system option, I mean. So on this one, it's just going to be Arcade. And then from here, click on Next. Now choose your default emulator. So I'm gonna choose RetroArch. And now default core. So I wanna use Final Burn Neo, but it isn't currently an option. I'm gonna to have to manually add that in in a bit. So for now, I'm just gonna choose FB Alpha. So we'll have more information on how to manually change cores for your Xbox Series X and S launch pass uh, emulation here. So I'm just gonna click on next. Again, tell it to use files in its current location, scan for metadata, and then check all of the options that LaunchPass is looking for. So uh, box 3D, box front, cart front, disc, screenshot, game select, title, gameplay, and then next. Next, next, and then when it sees your games, you can click on finish, and it will begin adding them and downloading the media types. And there we go, my arcade games have been added in, and again, if you wanna manually edit things, you could go into the edit button, edit metadata, can change between different images, add different images. So arcade games don't have an actual box art, by default, but some fans have made like 3D box arts, which are pretty cool. So that's why mine are showing up blank here. So if you wanna add other box arts and things in, you are perfectly capable of doing so, but I'm gonna go ahead and add in more games. So from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and skip ahead and get all of my retro art games added in. All right, now let's talk about adding games for a system that might not be listed by default. For example, Philips CDI. So this is a system that uses the same CDI core in RetroArch, but if you select RetroArch and go to your core listings, you'll see that same CDI is not here. So for this one, we're gonna have to manually add in a core, and this involves hitting the edit button here to bring up the emulator options. Click on associated platforms. Scroll down to the bottom of the platform list and select the blank box. Now type in Philips CDI. And make sure you spell it correctly because I actually have it misspelled in this example and I had to go back and fix it after the fact. Now make sure to get it selected as the default emulator and under the extra command line parameters, type in minus F like you see on all the other RetroArch cores. And then from here, hit OK. And then cancel. So unfortunately, as of right now, we are going to need to manually edit the XML file for LaunchBox to get the proper core in place for same CDI. So heading into our Xbox USB drive, open up the LaunchBox folder, and inside you will see a data folder. Open that one up, and you will see an emulators.xml file. So right click on this and hit edit. Now do a search for Philips CDI or whatever core you are trying to add. So in my example, it's Philips CDI. So we'll just type in Philips and that'll bring us to the XML listings that include Philips. And this will also show us the new one that we just added in. So you can see it right here, Philips CDI. And this is when I realized I accidentally misspelled my uh, typing here. So I went ahead and fixed that. But from here, go ahead and copy the command line from another core and paste it into the command line section for this core you are trying to add. Now we just have to change out the core name to our same CDI core. So I'm using my PC RetroArch version here that has same CDI installed. So it is named same CDI.libretro.dll. So I'm just going to copy the file name directly. And again, you can use the latest cores available on RetroArch.com as well to get this changed over. You don't have to uh, use the PC version like I am. This is just what made it easier for me. So I'm just gonna get the same CDI typed in right here and it is now good to go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save the XML file now and close out of it. 
And once that XM file has been edited, we can just close out of LaunchBox and then reload it. So now just launch back into LaunchBox and we can begin importing our CDI content once again. So import, ROM files, next, add folder, go to where your CDI games are located, select the folder. Hello, random. Next, choose Philips CDI is our system. Add in RetroArch, and now it already has the course selected for us because we edited it into the XML file. So if you click on edit, go to your associated platforms, you'll see under Philips CDI, it is choosing the same CDI core. But then just click on next, use the files in their current location, search for the metadata, and then choose all of the appropriate things. So box 3D, box front, clear logo, cart front, disc, fan art backgrounds, game select, title, game play. And then click on next, click on next, next. And then when it finds all of your games, click on finish. And then by going into the consoles tab here, I can see my Philips CDI stuff has been populated accordingly. All right, now on to systems that are not RetroArch. All right, now that I got all of my RetroArch systems imported, you can see all of them listed here. It takes a bit of time if you wanna make it look really nice. I didn't bother with a lot of stuff, but whatever. Let's go ahead and import stuff for Dolphin. So process is pretty much exactly the same, but I still wanted to show it off anyway. But you go to the games, or, you navigate to where your games are stored. So I have mine in my GameCube games folder here. Click on next, choose the default platform of Nintendo GameCube. And then you choose an emulator dolphin for GameCube games. Use the games in their current location, scan for metadata, and then those default options for what launch pass is looking for there. And then look at your games list that it wants to import. And if you have any duplicate stuff, like in an M3U file, we're not going to be using that with the standalone build of Dolphin. That's more of a RetroArch thing. So get rid of any M3U files you might have from your games list. So just going to do that. And there we go. Click on finish. Let the games get imported. And then let the metadata get downloaded. Or art assets, rather. And there we go. And once again, if you have any that aren't displaying the way you like, you could go in, edit it to make it appear as you would like it to be. I'm not going to bother right now because of time constraints. So moving on, let's go ahead and add in PS2 games now. So same deal as before. This time we're going to add in our PlayStation 2 games. Default platform, Sony PlayStation 2. Make sure the emulator is XBSX2. Use files in their current location. Next, next, next. Make sure all your games are displaying correctly. And then same thing as before, we could get rid of any M3U files that might be appearing. That is, once again, a RetroArch thing. There we go, and just click on next when you're ready to go. And there we go, PS2 now ready to go. And once again, you can fix up any games that aren't looking like you want them to. And finally, let's cover Xbox 360. So tools, import, ROM files. Now for the 360, we're gonna click on add files instead of the add folder. Otherwise you're gonna get way too much stuff to sort through. So navigate to where you have your Xbox 360 game stored. And then just go in and add in the default.xex for all of your extracted games. For Metal Gear, I'm going to add the individual launchers for Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 because that's how you get them to run. And then for all of your Xbox Live Arcade games, you can just select all of those. I don't remember what these ones were, so unfortunately I'm just going to have to leave them kind of broken at the moment. And then just click on next, choose Xbox, Microsoft Xbox 360 as your default system. Make sure Xenia Canary is your emulator. Use the files in their current location. Then click on next, go through here. 
And you're going to have to rename things, unfortunately. It's not going to auto-populate with the folder name. So I know what this one is. But yeah, now just go through and rename all of your 360 games. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to go back and redo my Xbox Live Arcade stuff later, because again, I just don't remember which one's which. But anyway. Click on Finish. It'll begin adding the games in and downloading things for the metadata it finds. And there we go, my 360 games now set up. So once again, you can go through and edit things to make it appear as you would like them to with box arts and all that. But again, for time constraints for this video, I'm just gonna have to leave it as it is and come back and do it later. And once you have finished importing all of your content, you can go ahead and close out of LaunchBox. Take the USB drive out of your computer and plug it back into your Xbox Series X or S. So now on the Xbox Series X and S, after that USB drive has been put in place, go ahead and launch Launch Pass. Now from here, go ahead and press A on Activate, and then press B to have all of your games and content start displaying. And you can just navigate with your D-pad to scroll through different systems and see the box arts and everything going on. And it shows the first five options, but you can click on a platform to expand into the whole thing. And you'll see anything that you added in start to populate it. And then you can just press B to back out of anything as well. And so just go through and start looking at all the games for all your systems and again give it a second to populate the box arts and stuff it takes it a second but then you could get more info on a game by pressing a on it and it'll bring up screenshots box arts if you added in videos those will play as well i didn't add in any videos but you could read the synopsis make the screenshots larger but then to launch any game, just press A on its box art and it'll boot you into the proper emulator and begin the game. So there we go. 007 The World Is Not Enough running on N64 emulation through RetroArch, but launched through LaunchPass. So cool stuff. Now it is recommended to make a hotkey to automatically quit out of games if you're using RetroArch, so that way it's just a lot more seamless. But you could just quit out of Re RetroArch any way you want and it should automatically bring you back into LaunchPass. And then you're free to just play any of your games all through this initial front end. And another example here for you. Here's Super Street Fighter 2 for 3DO launched through LaunchPass. And I don't have controls configured for this, so I'm getting absolutely devastated. Awesome. Anyway, so here we go. Ace Combat 6. Boots right up into Xenia Canary. Now for a PS2 example here. And there's Ace Combat 5 loading up. And finally GameCube. And there we are with GameCube. But once you've confirmed that all of your games are working, you can mess around with some of the launch pass settings. So going back into the settings menu here, you can make it your own with the customize options. So you can change over to box 3D images, the cart front images. Let's go over to box 3D real quick just to showcase that. Go down, apply changes. Let you know that the app is gonna be restarted. And then when it restarts, you are greeted with some nice 3D box arts here for any of the games that were able to find it. And then of course you could do carts, clear logos, fan backgrounds. The clear logo ones are pretty nice, honestly, as well. I feel like minimalistic stuff. But you could also change the backgrounds of everything that is scrolling through. So change between a bunch of different ones here. So let's just change everything to something different here just to kind of uh, show it off. So there we go. We've got 
new background here on the main page. If we go into a game that has a different background, the settings page has a different background. So you're able to customize quite a few things in here to your liking. Then I believe you can install new fonts if you desire as well. So there's a few choices for you just to change up your overall experience, make it your own, a little less bland. But at any time, if you want to go through and fix up any broken games, like my Atari 2600 section is a mess, like it's just disgusting. But at any point, if you want to change any of this stuff up, all you need to do is just make sure you quit out of RetroPass, make sure it has been terminated. Then you can take your USB drive out of the Xbox, put it back in your PC. And with the USB drive back on the PC, you could just go back into the LaunchBox app, open it up. But once you're in LaunchBox, you could go in, edit things as needed, go into other systems, can add in different images or videos. So if you wanted to, you could download a video for your stuff here. Can add in, in, can add in new images by downloading them. Just anything you need to configure, you do it within the LaunchBox app on a PC and it will be applied to your LaunchPass setup. But now let's talk about adding videos to your games. If you wanna add videos that will automatically play when you select a game so you can see some gameplay demos, there are a couple of options, but the integrated option is to use an MU Movies account. So head over to MU Movies, make an account. To get access to their video downloads, you are going to need to have an MU Movies subscription. I bought a lifetime pass to this years ago, but regardless, to add in movies for your games, just select a game in question, go to edit metadata slash media, find the video tab here, click download media, and then click on the MU Movies tab, configure MU Movies, and type in your user ID and password. But unfortunately, because my ME Movies account won't log in, I can't really show you the process of adding the movies right now. So I do apologize for that. But essentially, you get logged in, it shows you videos, you choose between a standard or you choose between a low res or a high resolution version, download it just like you do the images, and you can display it within LaunchPass. So not quite sure why it won't let me log in. Now for our alternative option, we are going to be using Scraper. So link to this will be in the description below, but you can just scroll down here and download it for Windows. And once that download is complete, just get it extracted. It is in 7-zip format. So if you don't have 7-zip installed on your computer, now is really the time to do so. But anyway, just gonna go ahead and get that extracted. Open it up launch the scraper UI here. And there are a couple of different options to work with here. So if you have a screen scraper account, you can log in with your username and password, validate it. If you wanna register for an account, you could do so here, but it can also be used without an account. Do be aware if you don't sign up for an account, the downloads will be a bit slower, but I don't know about y'all, but I just really don't wanna register right now. So now just wait for it to load up its resources. This can take a bit, so we will resume when it is finished. And once Scraper has eventually finished downloading all of its assets, we are going to select LaunchBox, click on Next. Now we need to select our LaunchBox folder on our Xbox USB drive. So go ahead and open that up, choose your media drive for Xbox, choose your LaunchBox folder and click OK. Now instead of it being a Next button, you're just gonna click on Skip. And we're gonna choose our ROM folder here. So just navigate to where you have your ROM stored on your Xbox USB drive. So I mean, I have mine in a games folder. Gonna click on okay here. Gonna tell it to inspect subfolders as well. And it's gonna pick up all the systems and games that you've got. And then click on next. And now when you get to the media selected for launch box, we're gonna go ahead and click on next again there as well. All right, now to get videos. I don't wanna do all my games, so I'm just gonna do Dreamcast real quick. So we're just gonna click on the play symbol here to run the scraping process. And there we go, it finished doing it for Dino Crisis. So I'm just gonna open up my Xbox games folder here real quick. Head into the launch box folder. 
And under videos, if we head into the Dreamcast folder here, we'll see that a DinoCrisis.mp4 video has been downloaded and is now ready to use within Launch Pass. But I'm just gonna go ahead and cancel the rest of this for now. But anyway, once the videos are added, you can just take the USB drive out of your computer and put it back into the Xbox and see it in action. All right, so back inside of Launch Pass here, I'm just gonna scroll down to my Dreamcast section. So Sega Dreamcast, head into Dino Crisis. And there we go, you can see it is now auto-playing that video that Scraper was able to find for it. Now let's go ahead and talk about swapping a default core within RetroArch. So LaunchBox sets things automatically based on its preferences, but they don't always align with what you might want to do. So to swap out a default emulator for use in LaunchPass, we're gonna go into our LaunchBox folder, go into the data folder, and then right click on the emulators.xml file and hit edit. And then from here you could do a find option so for today's example, I want to change my DS core from Desmumi to Melon DS. So I'm going to type in Nintendo DS, press enter, and there we go. Nintendo DS, and it is using the Desmumi libretro.dll core. So to switch over to Melon DS, I'm just going to bring up the build bot here for all the cores listing and look for Melon DS real quick. All right, there it is, melon ds underscore libretro.dll. So we're just gonna use what's already there and change this over to melon ds. There we go. And then save the changes. And then I'm gonna change my Sega Saturn core as well, just because I like using Beetle Saturn personally. Other people don't have to do this. This is just personal preference. You can use whichever cores you want. This is all personal preference stuff. I just wanted to make sure that you know how to do it. But anyway, where's Mednafen Saturn? All right, Mednafen underscore Saturn underscore libretro dot DLL. All right, so just gonna type that in under Saturn here. There we go. And I've already previously changed my Game Boy, Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance cores but you could basically go through and just change up all of your default cores here to better suit your purposes. But once you have everything ready to go, just save your XML file and then close out of it. And it is all good to go. Now let's talk about adding a custom font for further customization. So we are going to add in a Pokemon font because why not? Just Google search Pokemon font, found this one. So we're just gonna go ahead and download it and see what happens. All right, now I'm just gonna get this font extracted. Maybe. Maybe I will. There we go. All right. So fonts need to be either in TTF or OTF format to work within Launch Pass. So this one is in TTF format right here, perfect. So now I'm just gonna open up my Xbox USB drive here. Open up Launch Pass, open up the Fonts folder, and then drag the Pokemon font inside. And there we go. So now I'm just gonna close out of that. And I'm gonna move the USB drive back over to the Xbox. All right, now back on the Xbox, gonna launch into Launch Pass. Settings. Customize. Gonna change my font over to the Pokemon one here. Apply the changes. App will be restarted. And now inside. All right, well, it looks like it actually didn't like the Pokemon font, sadly, but that is the process on installing font files. Now just to find one that works. Now for anyone interested in more advanced customization options within Launch Pass, do know that you can put in your own custom video backgrounds as long as they are in 1080p resolution and a relatively small file size. I'm not sure if there's a limit on frame rates or anything, but the ones that come with Launch Pass are 24 FPS and then uh, the test video I'm gonna be using in today's example is 1080p at 30 FPS about. But yes, uh, just because I don't have anything actually cool to showcase at the moment, we are going to be using just this footage I have of my computer's 
uh, Blu-ray disc drive that I use in certain tutorials. So we're gonna add that to Launch Pass and make that our main background right now. So opening up your Xbox's USB drive, head into your Launch Pass folder, and you'll see that there is a backgrounds folder right here, and that is where you're going to put all of your videos in MP4 format. So you can see that there are the default ones here for Launch Pass itself. Do note, you don't want to delete any of these if they're in use, otherwise it will break the program and you'll just have to delete the entire Launch Pass folder to get them restored, but anyway. We're gonna drag the test MP4 file in right here and then go ahead and close out of that and move the drive back over to the Xbox to customize this into our, uh, our settings here. All right, so back into Launch Pass here, gonna head into Settings, Customize, and let's go ahead and make the main background page my new test MP4, which is displaying right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply the changes. And now when we back out to the main menu, oh, didn't take effect, hold on. Let's try it again. It's happened sometimes, so just make sure it's selected. There we go, apply the changes, there we go. And now, there we go, there is my computer's Blu-ray drive as the background of my LaunchPass installation. So, for those of you that are super into customizing your stuff, this is an available option, and you can customize all the various screens with different videos. So you're gonna be able to make this truly something special for yourselves. Uh, versus me, where I had nothing on hand, so we're using a Blu-ray drive. Like, that's just... Fantastic. <laughs> oh, options are great. Now let's go over some troubleshooting stuff you might want to be aware of as you get into your launch pass journey. So the first of which being you have launch pass set up, you've been using it, and then one day you decide to go in and use it, and it just loads up into a blank screen. Well, in that case, some of the XML files for LaunchBox might have gotten corrupted and need to be replaced with backup data. And the easiest way to check this is to move your USB drive back over to your computer and try launching into LaunchBox and see if you get an XML error. And if you get an error like that, just press OK and go into your friggin' backups. Find the last one you have. Extract it. And then copy all the XML files right here into your data folder, so that way it replaces them with functioning XML files. And there we go, it will now work again. Next, if you experience any crashes while trying to launch PS2 games with XBSX2, it might be that you need to set your system resolution to 1080p. This isn't always the case, but sometimes it does break and force you to use 1080p resolution. And this is an XBSX2 issue, not a launch pass issue, just to be upfront. Another issue you might encounter if you're keeping up to date with the latest emulator builds, if you're using standalone Dolphin 1.1.4 or 1.1.5, it will not work with Launch Pass. You need to use either 1.1.3 or 1.1.6 when it is eventually released. It is not available as of the time this video was made, but it should include front end fixes. So if you are on 1.1.4 or 1.1.5, you will need to downgrade to 1.1.3 for Launch Pass integration. And one more for emulator integration. If you are using standalone PPSSPP, you need to be using a specialized build that supports Launch Pass. It's not in the master version as of this video, but should be included shortly. So I will have a link to the PPSSPP build that will work with Launch Pass in the description below if you plan on using the standalone version and not RetroArch. And then for just some other basic information about Launch Pass, your sorting of games needs to be set to platform category, otherwise Launch Pass will not work. So if you mess with this list in here in any way, you will encounter errors in Launch Pass. It needs to be set to platform category. It is also worth noting that right now, standalone Flycast, AetherSX2, Duck Station are not supported. 
Aether SX2 and Duck Station likely will not get support as both of those emulators are considered dead at the moment, but standalone Flycast might get integrated at some point in the future, so just keep an eye out for any updates in regards to that. And there we go, Launch Pass up and running on the Xbox Series X and S with all of our games, customized settings, and a one-stop place to launch all of your retro gaming goodness. But thank you so much as always for watching today's video. I hope it helps you get your launch pass installations up and running to your desires. But here at the end of the video, I do have a couple of big favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like dislike button, depending on how much you like today's tutorial, as well as that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Loads of content always coming your way and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keeping it going, you can check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to help keep this place going and bringing all of this content directly to you. Big shout out to all of our current champions. Thank you so much for believing in what we do here and helping us keep it going. You are all amazing. Thank you so very much. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.